Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. to the session 9 of principles of management course students we have been discussing about various management principles and processes since the beginning in the last session we discussed about planning in detail and approaches to planning today we'll carry forward the connect pin between the concepts that is planning and forecasting so once we are through with the planning premises and ways for effective planning we shall discuss then forecasting and various effective ways how we can forecast in a better manner i am dr shikha n khera your instructor from delhi school of management delhi technological university let's proceed with the further discussion on forecasting and planning we have to start with planning premises what is planning premises it is nothing but the assumption of future. Here we try to understand how the environment is going to respond in coming times and based on those assumptions of environmental conditions we need to prepare a plan. So let us discuss the concept of planning premises in, in detail. This basically refers to the uncertainty of the environmental conditions and how it is important that the manager comes up with an accurate planning premise which becomes a basis for a wonderful plan for tomorrow. Planning premises can be viewed as environment for the plan where it operates. Planning premise can be defined as the anticipated environment in which plans are expected to be operated tomorrow. They include the assumptions and forecasts of future and known conditions that will affect the operations of the plans. And there are certain factors which affect the planning premises. What are the factors which affect the planning premises? These include market conditions price levels, laws, government policies, regulations, political stability, population trends and so on. With the help of these factors, if we are able to identify what are the right mix or status of these factors, we will be in a better position to tell what is the right kind of planning premises. Planning premises are capable of influencing the planning particularly two parameters one is goal determination as planning premise will lead to the determination of the goal and secondly implementation of the plan so the determination of planning premise actually is the result of forecasting the future environment by the manager and forecasting is very crucial not only to determine the plans but also to work out the planning premises. So thus we may say that planning premises are often either organization specific or they are industry specific. Now when it comes to these two kinds of planning premises organization specific and industry specific the internal premise of the organization are the organization specific premises. Now what are the variables of internal environment or internal premises? They include like sales forecasting, supplier constraints and distribution bottlenecks. We need to study these in detail so as we are able to identify the right kind of organizational specific variables which affect the planning premises. When it comes to industry specific planning premises, we need to see the external factors which include general environment and factors that are external to the organization. 
what can be the examples of factors which are external to the organization they include socio economic environment political and legal environment industry environment market conditions labor market etc so what we have to identify here is that we need to have effective and accurate planning premises and what will it give what are the benefits effective and accurate premises will give it will help us have properly developed plans further it will decrease the risk of uncertainties and finally it will improve the coordination amongst the organizational various levels now that we have understood planning premises what is important next we need to understand the barriers to effective planning now in organization who all takes care of the strategic plans that we discussed in the previous session it is the top management top management's attitude beliefs philosophy and their opinions they play a major role in play, making appropriate plans for the organization also the kind of plan top management makes it influences the workers or employees about the opinion and thought process of top top management and hence makes it a kind of coordination and communication channel between both the parties in the organization now when the top management is taking care of strategic planning or maybe the middle manager are taking care of the tactical and operational plans despite all efforts that they try to make accurate plans there are certain reasons because of which planning gets affected so what can be the reasons or what can be the barriers for effective planning let us discuss that now we have first barrier as unsuitability of the goals now when we say unsuitability of goals what does it mean it means that the organizational goals which have been made probably are not able to measure or verify what they are supposed to measure or verify in this case we may say that for example if we have to measure the goal for job satisfaction level of the employees it is very difficult to quantify the job satisfaction level of employees hence the goal for job satisfaction level of employee becomes little difficult and probably can be an unsuitable goal to measure it or to quantify it further the other reasons why the unsuitability of goals come into picture includes if the goal is either over ambitious or maybe unethical may be impractical also that is the reason why in many cases it becomes a disadvantageous goal and it is unsuitable for the organization another example for unsuitable goals can be over emphasis on credit sales target and may have a negative effect on goals of debt collection department so we have to see that there is no misalignment between the various goals of various divisions and departments as well because of which they may become tomorrow unsuitable for the organization second barrier that we have to focus upon is the dynamic environment now what happens the managers are continuously working in ever changing complex and uncertain environment which is highly dynamic unless otherwise the goals are accurately predicted or formed or formulated it is very difficult that the planning process comes up with a success or a fruitful outcome so working in such a dynamic environment may be suitable for short term goals maybe for you know environment where we can think of having some stability for certain shorter duration but for longer durations dynamic environment poses a big threat in terms of having an effective planning process other factors within dynamic environment may include which disturbs the organizational functioning is the rapid 
change in demographics of the customer. So, in such scenarios it becomes difficult to come up with effective planning. The third factor which becomes a barrier to effective planning is fear of failure. Now, what is fear of failure here? The future hold many surprises even for the managers who prepare meticulously well laid out plans because of the uncertainties in the environment and these uncertainties probably can put a threat and may create some kind of chaos or trauma which may lead to failure of final execution of the plans and this can be because of some sudden developments in the environment as well. So, thus this fear of failure where the manager lacks courage to cope up with the uncertainties may become an effective planning barrier. Now, what happens student when the change is proposed? Whenever a new plan comes up, this new plan is nothing but some kind of change which the organizational members are trying to bring in. Now, with this new plan, when change is proposed, it is inevitable and the members of organization that is employees, they try to resist it. They resist this because they are used to be in their status quo. It is difficult for them to come out of it. As a result, they do not want these new plans to be executed and thus resistance to change becomes another barrier for effective planning and managers need to have some coping up strategies which help them to reduce this resistance to change. In organizations, we talk a lot about resources and their usages. The success of planning often depends on critically how the resource or how much the resource is. So, how much is the resource and how they are allocated is very important for effective planning. In the times when resources are lacking, so because of that lack, there can be ineffective planning which may lead to inaccurate results. Next in line is lack of effective communication amongst the members. Communication is a very big prerequisite for effective communication or for effective planning. Poor communication may be caused by the employee's language. There can be cultural differences amongst the employees or various levels of the employees or maybe poor communication skills and complexity of planning process and ineffective communication instruments as well. How we are able to communicate are the com communication instruments in the organization. Now, if these instruments are also not well in place, they may lead to effective communication which can become a threat or may become a barrier for effective planning. Next is managers indifference towards organization thought process. This manager indifference is nothing but his preoccupation. As managers are busy with their routine task, they may have different targets with them. Because of lack of time, there may be possibility that they do not, do not put much emphasis on the planning process, rather they make short term plans which are just casual planning or time gap arrangements. With this managerial indifferences, there can be chances that the plans are not appropriately formed. So, this manager if indifference also plays an important role in becoming one of the barriers to the planning process. Then we have informal and casual planning. This informal and casual planning relates to managerial indifferences and also because of lack of follow-ups. 
if lack of follow ups or feedback is not given about the appropriate plan that how it was made and how it the outcome of the plan whether it has been achieved as per the desired results or as per the desired standards then in that case this causes informal and casual planning which becomes a barrier to effective planning process students now that we have discussed about why what are the barriers because of which planning process may get ineffective let us now try to understand the steps to make planning process effective so in one way we are trying to identify the reasons and causes probably because of which we can make the planning process better now what happens planning is done in organization to achieve success rather than failure in the scenarios when planning fails what is the outcome crisis chaos and anxiety in the mind of the manager which may lead to disturbances in the organizational functioning so thus a manager needs to go for continuous improvement in their planning process to make it more effective let us try to understand various steps which are involved in the planning process so the first thing that we have to take into consideration is top management support it is inevitable top management has to support it is his philosophy and the planning process that the top management is doing is for success of organizational vision or mission achievement so success of any planning process critically depends on top management's support commitment and involvement so at three levels the top management support is solicited the active and sincere involvement of higher management in planning process usually does what it inspires the confidence and creates a collaboration amongst lower level managements which not more than if anything it creates high morale for the employees also the plans that require major changes in organizational practices structure and style so three things that we need to see organizational practices structure and style of planning process they must enjoy the full patronage of top management for its successful implementation so these are the factors which lead to the successful implementations of planning process next parameter that makes planning process a better process is proper and timely communication so the critical factor here is communication that has to be in time bound manner and in a proper accurate manner effective communication plays a pivotal role in success of planning process without adequate communication within the organization what can be the devastating effect it can be that goals they become unclear and there is lack of coordination so this can be outcome of improper communication and if we are able to have effective communication we overcome these and we make make an effective plan top management must make certain managers well trained so this is also important aspect well trained in communicating the plans goals policies and procedures to the employees it must all ensure the presence of well organized system of communication among different groups which are involved in planning and execution process in organization this would ensure that everyone connected with planning has common understanding of how and when the plans are to be formulated and implemented so that means all organizational members are at same page and thus enhancing the effectiveness of planning process then moving further adequate availability of resources it must be committed to development and implementation of effective 
plans. If resources are higher, if resources are adequate, it leads to having right kind of maybe trained personals who are also a resource for the organization to develop right plans, the right resources in terms of physical resources also so that we can have simultaneous ongoing activities which also is a part of planning process. So in this regard managers must make an accurate assessment of plan requirements. This is an important aspect unless until the requirements are clear in the mind of the manager, he cannot identify what kind of resources are required or what are going to be the adequate resources. So in terms of organizational resources and ensure that these resources are utilized in timely and effective manner. Having resources is one aspect, utilizing them for further planning processes or for getting the planning process in right manner is another aspect. So timely and effective manner the delivery of resources is solicited. Next is constant revision and updating of the plans. Now when it comes to constant revision and updating of the plan it refers to the feedback and evaluation of the plan that we have made. If we have made a plan we need to definitely go back and see whether it is going as per the desired schedule or not. The resources, the timeline, the outcomes that we thought of are as per what we had already anticipated in the beginning and thus we may say that the feedback is something which is very much required for planning process and this revision helps us in doing what? This revision helps us in identifying any kind of deviation from the path if we are having and this deviation helps us to control the process again and to find out that how or what are the reasons where barriers or bottlenecks are occurring and how we can do the right kind of rectification in our planning process tomorrow for effective planning and effective outcome. And such feedback must form the basis for reviewing the planning process and also for initiating the changes and improvements if necessary. Next factor which helps the organization to move ahead and have uh, effective planning is participatory approach. What is participatory approach? It refers to involvement of employees in the planning process. If employees are involved in terms of taking care of their participatory approach to decision making or to plans it gives manifold benefits to the employees and organization. It gives higher level of motivation to the employees. It enhances the self-esteem of employees. It enhances the learning of employees which eventually lands up in having effective plans for the organization. It also gets a feeling of ownership amongst the employees. Having this feeling of ownership can do wonders in organization. You know students how? As you feel citizens of your country and you have that passion to do something for the nation. So similarly, if we are able to develop this ownership amongst the member in organization, they also feel the same initiative feelings and same commitment towards the organization which may enable them to go an extra mile for the organization and do wonders. Participation in planning also makes employee partly responsible for successes and failure of the plan initiatives and when employees feel that we are part of not only the success but also the failure, they have less negative thought process in their mind that the plans were imposed on them, that the plans were not discussed with them before. If they would have been discussed with them, probably these errors might not occur. So when they are part of plans which fail, they know what were the hiccups in this planning process or during the execution of plan. Thus, they are more empathetic towards the top management which strengthens the board between the top management and the employees. Management can involve employees at every possible stage of planning process which will have a higher level of participatory approach. Also if the employees are provided with adequate rewards then it gives higher level of motivation to the 
employees and sense of commitment towards the organization. So, plan linked rewards play major role in securing willing cooperation. Now, this is very important. Everything depends on the intent of the individual. If individual's intentions are positive, they will have definitely good contribution towards the system. So, generating this feeling of willingness in cooperation gains advantage to the organization and this can be done with the help of appropriate rewards to employees when they are involved in the planning process. Management must ensure the presence of rewards for effective execution of organizational plans and also make sure that employees are aware of existence of these rewards. Many a times employees are not aware of whether the rewards are existing for any kind of contribution they are doing to the organization. So, such things need to be updated in employees mind. Then comes sufficient and effective control. As we all know planning and control are highly dependent on each other for effectiveness. For instance, effective planning is a prerequisite for effective control. Unless until we have made a planned document which is appropriate, we cannot have right kind of control system in the organization because planning document only becomes the standard for measuring the performance. So, management must how to reach to this scenario? The management must analyze, identify and eliminate what the manager has to analyze, identify and eliminate, eliminate deficiencies in the existing controlling practices and it should then put in place an effective mechanism for constantly monitoring and controlling the planning activities which will help members in organization who are formulating these plans to remain in the path which is more suitable. Next is the positive attitude. Now, if a manager is highly courageous and has an optimistic and positive attitude, he can win over any challenging situation which may come. So, having this positive attitude becomes a primary factor or you can say quality in a manager to have an effective planning. The positive thinking enables the managers to take chances or risks in their job where they have the courage to overcome these chances or risks. Positive managers tend to view difficulties in environment as challenges and tackle them confidently because they are fearless. This fearlessness plays a very important role in developing this confidence to tackle these challenges. The principle of positive thinking helps the manager to offer his best in all situations. So, organizations must cultivate a positive attitude among its members by developing a positive culture and thought process. Next is very interesting factor that is climate of creativity. Now, when an organization thinks of growing, when the organization has some new ideas, these new ideas are the ones which help manager to make up new plans or bring in changes in organization. Now, when we are talking about climate for creativity, that is having the new novel innovative ideas we need to give the organizational members or managers that platform to be creative that platform where they can are uh, they have a fearlessness towards failure where they can think of that yes this is the platform or this is the organization where we are being trusted we are being trusted that the thought processes we are putting in to improve the process not to so this climate of creativity enables the manager to avoid obsolescence and give new and novel ideas to the organization for having effective planning process so organizations must emphasize on the climate of creativity this will help the in increase in performance of the manager and for that what management has to do management has to develop a desire in the mind of the manager to be highly creative 
they also have to accept that each problem has some creative solution. So this is the positive and optimistic outlook the manager has to have in them and they have to believe that they are the ones to find it. This is unknown in the environment but students it always exists. So this unknown creative solution has to be found by the manager and members must have what to do that? The climate of creativity says that members must have enough freedom so that they can put forth their opinions and they can then formulate the right kind of plans. As we started off the session with planning premises, this also becomes one of the things or one of the factors which may lead to effective planning. So accurate planning premises may lead to better planning. We all understand plans may fail due to wrong assumptions about the expected environmental conditions. So planning premises, more it is focused upon, it results in some kind of forecasting for future which is right or accurate or appropriate. So managers must improve their forecasting skills and techniques to make more accurate planning and assumptions in the planning premises process. Also proper integration of goals is required when it comes to having effective planning. So overall goal of organization are typically accomplished through a series of interdependent but dissimilar goals and plans. In the absence of proper coordination, these goals and plans may work with cross purposes leading to their failure. So if there is no proper coordination amongst various units, divisions, departments, etc. in the organization, it may lead to failure of the purposes or failure of proper achievement of goals. It is thus essential for management to ensure proper coordination amongst two or more interdependent plans executed to achieve a common goals. So there can be plan like sales plan, there can be a plan like recruitment plan. All such plans should be in sync with each other, should be aligned with each other properly. Now students, we know the nitty gritties of planning. Another important aspect in planning is the concept of forecasting. What is forecasting? Henry Fiol said that we need to have a systematic foresee of the future. And thus he mentioned that a series of small plans are nothing but the forecasts. Ulrich also, one of the famous researchers, Ulwick said that management has a pervasive outlook. It is present at all levels of the management. He mentions that someone who starts a new business actually anticipates the future demand of the product that he is going to make in tomorrow's time to come. Further he adds on, someone who starts up with higher production in the organizational shop floor anticipates that in future, in next 6 months, 12 months, his product is going to be more liked by the customer or demanded by the customer. Not so only in terms of starting a new business or adding on more production schedules to the system. Forecasting is when a manager recruits new employees in the organization, anticipating that that competence will be required for tomorrow's time. All these are examples for forecasting and we say that forecasting is required for dependable planning. This systematic forecasting is estimate of future in a planned manner. Let us now understand the concept of forecasting from theoretical concepts. Forecasting is the process of predicting. what will occur in future and in simple terms it is the estimate of future. 
The purpose of forecasting in organization is to make best use of present available information to guide the future activities for accomplishing the organizational goals. Forecasts have direct as well as indirect effect on almost all the organizational activities. Forecast, for example, is important and unavoidable task for organizational decision making plus planning. So, both these parameters are or phenomena are dependent on how accurate the forecasting has taken place. The primary aim of forecasting is to improve the accuracy and quality of decisions. As we started off and discussed on that an organization in, is incepted, a startup is done anticipating demand of the product this startup is launching in the society. Now here they have to be dependent upon how accurate and what was the quality of this decision that they have made and forecasted in right manner. Have they done the right due diligence? Have they studied the customer preferences appropriately? Were they able to identify any kind of socio-demographic political changes, economic or changes in taxation policies? On that basis, they have devised this decision of launching the new product in the market, which inevitably is dependent upon on the forecasting process. So, good forecast can lead to better planning and decision making. It lowers cost, which is an important aspect and it enhances customer satisfaction and better competitive advantage for the organization. Now, how it lowers cost? When you are going to employ an organizational member, if you employ right person for right job, so that means you have forecasted and planned well for your organizational needs. But vice versa, if you employ someone whose competencies are not much required or are redundant or obsolete, that may lead to lower cost or incur higher cost of organization. Enhanced customer satisfaction is because the customer is now getting what the customer desired. While you did the due diligence to find out what are the customer preferences, you did the right kind of identification of customer needs and desires and now the customer builds a trust in your organization because he feels that the preferred product and service is being de delivered to me and it is all because of nothing else than the forecasting process. In contrast, poor forecasting can lead to disastrous decision which can be hampering not only the image of the organization but also the profits. So, profits plus brand image of organization is at stake. Moving further, let us see formally what are the definitions of the concept of forecasting. It forecasting, Armstrong says, forecasting relates to what will happen if the firm tries to implement a given strategy in a given possible environment. So, two things, one is the environment and the other is the strategy. They should be properly aligned. Forecasting is a systematic attempt, according to Lewis A. Allen, to Probe the future by inference from the known facts. Now, what do we understand by inference from the known facts? We know what are the environmental conditions. And based on these known facts of environmental conditions, we are then deciding on how the future will look like. Moving further, what would be the significance of business? forecasting. Now, here as we all understand that forecasting is fundamental to any planning process and it has both short term as well as long term utility for the business organization. Forecasting has become increasingly very important for organizations to focus on two things that is customer satisfaction along with customer loyalty and the retention of the employees as well as customers. Accountants for example usually forecast the cost and revenue 
while HR manager will predict what? HR manager will predict the changes in the work force. And similarly, financial manager will forecast the cash flow and inventory requirements. Production manager will forecast what students? Production manager will forecast to determine the raw material requirements for the production schedule. We shall now discuss the importance of business for forecasting from different perspectives. So, first is better anticipation. Repeatedly managers have to anticipate and project the future results based on past and present. So, these future results based on past and present organizational performances to make certain important business decisions. So, forecasting enables the managers to make informed decisions through better anticipation and superior production of uncertain environments with the help of relevant information gathered and analyzed. For instance, if organizations predict an economic recession, which is a troubled state for any economy, they can cut back to their inventories, production quotas and hiring so as to have a safe zone for their financial stability. In contrast, if an economic boom is predicted, which is a favorable condition for the future, organizations can plan additional investments to get the maximum benefit out of it, additional investments in terms of expansion of their business. What can they do here? In the expansion of their business, they can think of adding a new product line, opening a new plant for their business or maybe adding new division to the department or investing more into research and development. Next is development of situational awareness which probably will be added on if forecasting is done in appropriate manner. So, forecasting enables the manager to have a better understanding of organizational environment. Thus, they can be more effective and accurate in their decisions and through forecasting an organization also attempts to determine whether to whether and to what degree its long range plans are feasible. So, situational awareness adds on or gets better with effective forecasting. Better responsiveness. Now, what is better responsiveness students? Responsiveness is that how the environment is posing threats to us or opportunities to us and what kind of response we are giving to them. If we are able to anticipate right opportunity for us, the result is we are going to get expansion in business, higher market share and higher profitability. If we are able to anticipate well that there is going to be threat in the environment, maybe a new competitor emerging or some competitive move by the already existing competitors which can harm the organizational profitability at some time. So, all these things which are categorized as better responsiveness can help the manager gain advantage and this can be achieved or this is one of the important features of forecasting. So, better and faster response to changes in the external organizational environment is only possible through forecasting and this responsiveness allows organizations to sense and respond faster and smarter to developments in dynamic environment and this is highly solicited by the manager that they should respond faster and quickly. Forecasting also enables organizations to see changes that have occurred both planned and unplanned events. 
improved coordination this is what we understand well that yes planning and goal setting assumes inclusion and coordination of activities of various segments within a business environment forecasting demonstrates how these activities are actually interconnected and helps the manager to enhance the coordination of various activities so thus we may say that forecasting will result in better coordination of interdepartmental activities now we understand that forecasting helps in better customer services what do we mean by that when a manager is able to forecast well what is he able to identify he is able to identify the pulse of the customer and this pulse of the customer helps him to respond appropriately back to him this right kind of response creates higher satisfaction in the customer you all must have sometime or other in your lifetime experienced it that if you feel the organization has appropriately incorporated any kind of change you thought of or you gave them in feedback they have incorporated those changes and as a result you have higher satisfaction level from that particular product or service so thus we say that better forecasting helps in better customer services so accurate forecasting and customer requirements managers can have better output of customer retention for instance when product demands are not forecast organizations can expect the product to be available in the market so forecasting hence becomes crucial to ensure satisfactory or even excellent customer services if we are able to forecast well we can always we all understand by now students that we can better utilize the resources we can reduce the cost on uh, that incurs on the resources so accurate estimation of resources both physical as well as human through effective forecasting can help organization to avoid any kind of idle resource and over capitalization so these are the gains that forecasting is going to give to the manager it will lower the cost we have already discussed about it how it lowers the cost because we have accurately predicted requirements thus we can have cost saving in our operations in the organization now if we are able to forecast well then what happens we plan appropriate strategy for the organization this planning of appropriate strategy then helps the organization to be saved from future shocks and these future shocks which can be quite damaging for organizational survival and sustainability may be this forecasting helps the organization member to take any kind of huge turn or restructuring they have to do in their strategy very well so we may say that forecasting saves the organization for any negative effects of future shock and thus we need to focus on having appropriate forecasting standard for comparison is also what we call as the forecast the forecast statement becomes the standard for comparison for tomorrow it creates the baseline against which actual data can be measured forecast also anticipates that what kind of future we are going to see and what can be the gap between the actual results and the forecasted result so forecasting is again used to reduce the gap in next period or cycle hence saving cost and gaining better market image here students there is an example of innovation lab at infosys this innovation lab at, at infosys is an example for how forecasting is done by one of the major indian organization it says that inno infosys has established an innovation lab as a part of company's new strategic measure building tomorrow's enterprises now what this lab does this lab has dedicated research and innovation facilities where 600 members strong technology and domain focus team is working and their primary focus is on research innovation and co-creation 
now students see how this organization is giving a platform for creativity which is a fundamental requirement for effective forecasting so this lab aims at delivering and managing innovation both inside the organization and outside for customers and partners or other stakeholders also this lab focuses on developing solutions to complex business problems when they are able to give these solutions they can be organization specific or can be industry specific the team members of this lab focus on something called as emerging technology and their business applications so here focus is highly on research and innovation and with the help of the business applications like quantitative analytics for decision support these are the tools the organization is using to forecast so these are quantitative analytics for business support visualization and multi model interactions intelligent adaptive systems large scale simulations semantic technologies and social media by this what they are able to gain they are able to recognize that their best competitive advantage and differentiator in the future world would be innovation so this is what this is nothing but the philosophy of top management and philosophy of top management then helps the organization to have a better growth tomorrow i hope you have learned from this example of infosys students about how forecasting and proper planning can lead to business competitive advantage and growth now let's spend some time in understanding the types of forecasting forecasting serves different purposes and platforms for different tasks in the organization corporate planners they use forecasting for new products so this is for corporate planning market manager utilizes forecasting for having sales strategies production manager uses forecasting for production schedules or maybe to identify the planning plant capacity so these are the reasons why forecasting is in different form utilized by different members so on the basis of basic characteristics what can be the basic characteristics one that is level of details required second the pattern of data required and third the forecast horizon forecasting can be divided into two categories it can be short term forecasting or can be long term forecasting so depending on how far ahead it should try to predict the organization choose between the short term and the long term forecast what is their thought process how far they want to look into forecast objects and the nature of variables to be forecast can also influence managers decisions concerning the type and duration of forecasting generally we have seen that forecasting becomes less accurate when the period of forecasting is longer so we shall now briefly discuss these two types of forecasting which includes short term forecasting and long term forecasting so this short term forecasting is also called operational horizon forecast which is generally for smaller duration that is maybe for weekly for months or even for certain days so these forecasts are thus called as short term forecast since long term forecast suffers from high level of uncertainty due to demand variations when you go for longer forecasting time it creates demand variations or may be credit shortages so thus changes in government policies etc hence to put it differently organizations often narrow their forecast to achieve results over a short term period of time this will enhance their control over operations also 
The forecast is essential for production scheduling, transport scheduling and personal scheduling. So, we are talking about short term forecast here. Long term forecast is also known as strategic horizon and this is generally based on for a very long period of time. It provides basis for formulating major goals and plans for the organization. The organization, it helps the organization in deciding long term personal requirements. So, these are the examples for long term forecasting, capital expenditure, requirements, financial requirements, etc. Now, in operational and short term forecasting, organizations normally have little or no ability to change the future. When it comes to the various kinds of forecasting, we have different techniques that is top down forecasting. It refers to the forecasts that are done at higher levels of management. So, students this top down forecasting includes that the top management will plan and will disseminate that forecast to the lower level. While in opposition to this is our bottom up forecasting. In bottom up forecasting which is against the traditional technique of forecasting, the managers at lower level those who are performing the task, they give their independent forecast, they are then collated and then they are transmitted to the top management for further discussions and execution or implementation or maybe dissemination of the information. So, bottom up forecast are generally forecasted at the lower levels. Now, quickly let us see the principles of forecasting. So, principles include that forecasting is a difficult process which has to work in unstable and uncertain environment. It is different from planning. The planning is concerned with how the world should look while forecasting is how it looks like tomorrow. So, there is a difference between the two, how it should look and how it will look. So, thus it is different from planning. Short term forecasts are generally more accurate than long term forecasts. So, while attempting to forecast the future, managers should have a clear understanding of what variables we are using to forecast, what are the timelines we are using to forecast, what is the existing knowledge we are concerning. And finally, the forecast should not have any kind of biased attitude of the manager. So, manager must take into consideration these things while he is forecasting. So, key elements of forecasting students include we must understand what forecasting is, forecasting demand and planning the supply for tomorrow, communicate, cooperate and collaborate. This we have already discussed in the session very well. Eliminate the islands of analysis, we should only go for analysis which are relevant, use the tools wisely, make forecasting an important feature in the organization and focus on measure, measure, measure that is quantify and then validate the results. So, when we measure, such measurements give us more accurate results. So, students we conclude this session by understanding India's inspirational manager. Here we talk about Mr. Asim Premji who is the chairman of Wipro and a leading global IT company. I will quickly go through the major aspects of his work. So, due to his attitude and far sightedness. Now, this is important forecasting is dependent on far sightedness and bold leadership. The US then the US dollar 1.5 million company manufacturing hydrogenated cooking oil fats evolved into a US dollar 7 billion company by diversifying and integrating. Now, what are these? They are the strategic moves based on the farsightedness into its con conglomerate services like medical systems, technology, products, etc. And when IBM had to quit India due to policy differences with Indian government in late 1970s, Asim Premji again foresaw a perfect opportunity for Wipro in IT and IT allied fields. And then he predicted, now see students how, how important it is to have right kind of prediction and forecasting that a right blend of business skills, technical strength and post sale services would be winning formula for Wipro in this sector. 
and eventually Mr. Asim Premji's production became true as Wipro emerged as a manager, major player in IT business. And here Mr. Asim Premji has successfully developed the Wipro way, a process which directly impacts the customer benefits by improving market and enhancing predictability. So, as the head of corporate executive council Wipro Limited, Asim Premji has also active in deliberating the long term vision and goals of the corporation. So, this is how students I wanted to highlight to you that how corporates are utilizing the basic fundamentals of management that is planning, forecasting, setting up goals, accurately predicting them well. For this particular session students this is the bibliography which I have referred to. You may also look into these books for enhancing your further knowledge in the area and this bibliography has various books included in it. While bibliography I have talked about, I would now like to tell you that once we are through with the planning and forecasting, we will move forward to various techniques of forecasting towards the end. So here I would like to thank you all for today's session.